here and uh, it's all yours, Carolyn. Wonderful. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me back. I hope everybody had a great summer. Uh, I know from our perspective, it was busy, but it was enjoyable. Our, our son and daughter-in-law got married this summer in the backyard, which was a nice celebration for our family too. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Carolyn Crate. I'm a lawyer at Fahey Crate Law in Sutton, Ontario. Our office is on High Street. I practice with my partner, Jim. Um, I primarily handle the real estate and he primarily handles the wills and estate side of our practice. However, we do cross over into each other's areas. Um, my, my point in joining today is to give you just information from a lawyer's or legal perspective. It's not to be relied on as legal advice. If you do need legal advice, I just have to put that caveat out there that we do have to enter into a formal retainer agreement either with you directly or with your client, however the case may be. That being said, we'll move on. Today's topic is advice on how to handle purchases where vehicles or um, you know uh, boats are being included in the purchase price of the home. So things like boats, CDUs, ATVs, cars, tractors, etc. So I'll tell you, first off, from a lawyer's perspective, if it is something that is to be registered with the ministry under, you know, under other legislation, um, then we prefer that it just stay out of the agreement entirely and the buyer and seller deal with that on their own. But I will go through a high overview level of what the differences are. So with boats, it depends on the size of the boat or the motor maybe, and the use of the vehicle, of the, of the watercraft. There is a difference uh, between what they call pleasure craft and commercial vehicles. So if you think of like a commercial ferry service, that has to be registered. Pleasure craft can be anything from as small as a paddle boat, a canoe, a kayak, to a fishing boat with a small motor, you know, to a 25 foot, 30 foot, 50 foot, and all of those make a difference. Um, again, with watercraft, there is a difference between being licensed or registered, and it is through Transport Canada. So it is the federal government that regulates that. Um, commercial vehicle, commercial watercraft must be registered. Pleasure craft um, can be registered, but they only need to be licensed, uh, again, depending on the size and I think it's governed by the size of the motor so I looked it up yesterday it said if the pleasure craft has a motor of 7.5 kilowatts or 10 horsepower or more then it must be licensed unless it is registered against again as a commercial vehicle or as a under the Canadian Register of Vehicles and I do have some links to the various websites which I'll forward to Michelle or Sarah after the meeting and then you can circulate it amongst the members because they do give a nice high you know level overview on their websites of, of definitions distinctions the steps and for the watercraft now um, you used to have to mail in all the documentation but again COVID has kind of that's been one of the few benefits of COVID, everything's now done online. So you submit your application online with all your documentation. With vehicles, again, you think of cars, trailers, ATVs, those are registered through Service Ontario. Now, um, again, going back to watercraft, smaller vessels uh, such as kayaks, canoes, paddle boats, they don't need to be registered. Um, and if you think of smaller vehicles like a golf cart or depending on the size of the vehicle, if it's only for private personal use on your land, then you don't need to re register it or get a license plate for it. So you need to have an ownership, a bill of sale to acquire ownership. But there's a lot of times where people will have acreage, um, you know, especially if you think of up north hunt camps, and they've got a vehicle and they don't plate it for the road, they just use it on the property for the trails to get, you know, maybe from the roadside into the cabin and, and so if they're not plating it, then you don't need to necessarily get uh, do the same thing, uh, registration with the MTO office. Um, so going back to watercraft. And again, I'll send you the link. A formal bill of sale is required. It must state the purchase price or the value of the watercraft, the year, the make, the model, the hull identification number, the motor details. So again, year, make, model, serial number, uh, the size or the horsepower. It also has to have the buyer's and seller's names and address. And obviously the seller has to sign that bill of sale. For transferring uh, a pleasure watercraft license, um, the federal government also requires a copy of signed valid government ID for each owner, so the seller and the buyer. 
Um, and they want full side view color photographs of the pleasure craft. And the other um, thing to keep in mind is that the 13% tax HST or I guess retail sales tax is how they refer to it on the website, but really it's the HST must be paid on what the watercraft purchase price. Now Transport Canada does not collect that tax. So if it's applicable, it has to be paid by the buyer at a service Ontario office um, or directly to the Minister of Finance. Now with the vehicles, again, there's to be a formal bill of sale. Um, to include the, the purchase price, the year, make, model, serial number, the seller's and buyer's name and address. And again, it must be signed by the seller. In addition to that formal bill of sale, you need that green ownership. And, and again, think of your green ownership. There's two parts. There's a plate side and a vehicle side. It has to be torn in half. And it's the vehicle ownership side that must be endorsed by the seller and handed over to the buyer on closing. Um, additionally, the, the uh, ministry requires a used vehicle information package or a UVIP. Um, this package uh, shows if there's any liens against the vehicle. And again, the 13% tax must be paid by the buyer to the service Ontario um, on the value of the purchase price or the wholesale value, whichever is greater at the time that the ownership is transferred and registered with the ministry. Now, the other thing is the buyer may have to get a safety certificate. So that's something else to keep in mind. Um, and again, that's going to be part of that negotiation process is the seller selling it as is and it's up to the buyer to get their own safety certificate or is the seller going to get the safety, uh, get the vehicle safety for the buyer. Um, that being said, and this is where I said we as lawyers generally prefer that these types of vehicles or watercraft that require this sort of registration process, we prefer not to deal with it. Um, just because it's not something we normally do. Um, it's better for the buyer and seller just to deal directly on their own for that. Now, I don't know how you feel as realtors, but I would think it's the same idea. You want to limit your liability. It's not something you would normally deal with. Let the parties deal directly with themselves. Um, and if you often think like if you put in an offer to purchase a home, it might not close for two weeks, three weeks, 60 days. Um, what's gonna to happen to that watercraft or that vehicle in the interim? And so now as, as an agent, you're now trying to deal with, well, do we need representations and warranties that it's gonna be in the same condition or uh, no further hours on the motor or no further mileage on the odometer? And again, I think from your perspective, it's just better let the parties deal with it themselves and then they can deal with that transfer of ownership at any time. Because when you think of when you go to buy a vehicle, you know, if you're buying a used vehicle, you go out, you look at it, you go, yeah, I think I might be interested. I'm going to take it for a test drive. I'm going to have my mechanic look at it. And then within a day or two, you transfer uh, the funds and the ownership. So it's all done very quickly. And there's not there's no issues of, you know, um, what happens between the time we struck our deal and the time we actually transfer ownership. The other thing to keep in mind and why lawyers don't like to see these types of items included in the agreement of purchase and sale if they are a high value item um, is because the consideration on chattels is technically not to be included in the deed for land transfer tax purposes. So when we see a house, you know, say it's purchase price is $500,000 and includes the fridge, the stove, the washer, the dryer, um, the freezer, and maybe they put in a TV and a couch. We look at that and we say, those are used um, items. They're not worth anything. So we put the, the 500,000 purchase price in the deed and land transfer taxes paid on that. But if there were a substantial number of chattels or very high end, well, let's say they threw in a, a boat that's worth 50 grand. Well, now we have to back that out and we say, no, the deed for the, the price in the deed for the building and land is only 450. And that 50,000 is the value of the boat. And now as lawyers, we have to collect that, that retail sales tax and arrange for the remittance of that to the government. So that's why we say it's much easier, take, take those large value items out, let the buyer and seller deal directly on their own for that. And just put those nominal chattel value items in, those are fine to be included, especially things like, you know, kayak, canoe, life jackets, like really they're, they're not worth much. So we just put them all in. Um, and then the other thing is that I wanted to mention is that the UVIP, the used vehicle information package, does indicate if there's any liens against the vehicle. 
um, but I don't think there's something similar for boats. So if there is a large value item, um, boat or vehicle that your client's purchasing, we can always do a PPSA search against the seller. And if there's a serial number against the actual item itself under the PPSA to make sure that there are no liens against the item. Um, and like, that's fairly easy. I think the disbursement for that's like $30. So you might be looking at a hundred dollar cost total for a PPSA search and it can be done at any time. Like it's fairly, fairly quick and instant. Um, there were two questions that were sent to me. So one was, are we supposed to be checking the ownerships for the cars? So again, if a vehicle is included, then, then yes, um, the, the buyer should be getting that endorsed green ownership uh, vehicle portion as part of their closing documents. Um, but typically, as lawyers, we would make sure that that happens if that's our responsibility. But again, we try to say no, you deal directly. Um, and then the other one was, uh, it, you know, is there a clause that should be inserted to limit mileage before closing? So again, yes, if if you're putting that vehicle in there, then I think you need, you need to address what's going to happen between now, the date of the offer being accepted and the date of closing, if there's a substantial time time difference. Um, but like I said, I think it's much better just to, if it's something like that, let the parties deal with it on their own. Any so Carolyn, yes. I was going to say, yeah, it's Jen. Um, so for, it almost sounds like it would, you'd be better off saying like, let's say the buyer really, really wants the boat that's, you know, that the seller is agreeing to include and it's something bigger than 10 horsepower and something you're going to, you're going to register. Would it be better to just say like, you know, the, the offer is conditional upon the successful execution of a, of a contract, you know, at $1 between the buyer and the seller for this boat, like basically just document that it's, it's going to be part of the sale, but it's a separate agreement. Like, is there some kind of clause so that we can use for that? If, if it's imperative that the buyer get that boat, then yes, you're going to want to put something in the agreement, but to reference another contract, I agree. I don't know if you necessarily want your land purchase to be conditional on a boat purchase. It may be the reverse, that the boat purchase is conditional on the land purchase closing. Um, and what you may want to do, though, and we've, we've seen this before, um, clients bought on Georgina Island or Snake Island, one of, one of the islands, and they wanted the boat that went with it, but it was a large boat and had to be registered under the, under the, with through Transport Canada. And so we put a clause in that just says, um, you know, buyer agrees to sell the, or seller agrees to sell the boat to the buyer on closing and arrange for transfer of ownership and registration. Um, if it's not done within a certain time period, then there was a dollar value that the seller had to reimburse the buyer. So again, we, because he wanted the cottage, right? But if he didn't get the yes. boat, then he still had the cottage, but then he had to go buy a boat. So he then had some sort of dollar value that was going to be paid back and enforceable if he didn't get the boat transfer within a certain period of time. But I think it took like three months for that boat transfer to go through. Um, there was a glitch. The seller actually hadn't transferred the boat into his name when he bought it so he had to do that transfer first so there was oh a my gosh yeah <laughs> so it would it almost maybe we can get like a copy of like that kind of clause and sure. then we'll just make sure everyone's trained on basically don't put them in like unless it's just basically a you know five horsepower little runaround boat or kayaks or canoes we'll make sure that this clausing's in there on something bigger because we've had those challenges even from a finance perspective um the mortgage companies if they see that bigger item in there they'll pull the plug right yeah. because they're not going to lend on that kind of item right, right? they and don't want the mortgage covering it yeah and then they're the mortgage the lender's looking at well what's the value you know you've put yeah. 500 yeah. on the cottage and so, and there's and the boat's included but really what's the what's the value so it is better that it that it not be um, sort of, yeah, included under the agreement of purchase and sale. It should be a separate contract. But I agree, we could put something in that, that reference that it exists, it's enforceable, it's separate, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the way to go and just keep keep everybody safe. Because when you're talking, I'm like, oh my God, what if they didn't winterize the boat? Like, what yeah. if, there's so many what ifs when you start, when you, when you actually start talking, now I'm, now I, <laughs> it's like brought a whole other, 
like all these questions of liability up in my mind now. I think this is amazing. So thank you Absolutely. for this. Yeah. And, and when I use the example of like a vehicle, like a car, you get, you, you know, you take it for a test drive, you have your mechanic look at it. They do the same with boats. You know, you take it for a test drive out on the lake. You want to make sure yeah. it's not leaking. And then you either have a marine mechanic look at it or maybe in addition to that, you may also have um, a, um, survey. a watercraft a survey done. And, it, and it's a special yeah. watercraft survey. And they go over the whole boat. They look for, you know, dry rot, osmosis, you know, all sorts of things. Yeah. No, that's this is like amazing information. I'm going to put this out on the internet because you know what? <laughs> People are not thinking about this, right? It's just yeah. not something that's in our wheelhouse generally. Yeah, exactly. Now I have seen um, people buy like hunt camps or, um, you know, and, and, there, and there's a lot of contents included, tables, chairs, dishes, or even you think of Georgina Island, they include all the bedroom furniture and the pots and the pans and because people aren't going to take it off the island and bring it back. But again, you look at that as used contents, it's not worth much. If they had to sell it at a garage sale, they're getting nothing for it. So we don't worry about it. But it's these larger vehicles, larger watercraft, it does make a difference. Yeah, and probably just that when you're doing that as as is, where is on all those items. So there's yeah. no real representation from the seller side. Yeah. Very good. Any, Any other you have questions? A question? Um, Carolyn, you mentioned uh, speaking about the watercraft. What is the difference between licensed and registered? Because you said if it, it has to be registered or at least licensed. What's the difference? So pleasure craft, when you think of like your sea do or your your fishing boat, your you know your twenty five foot water ski boat, um, those are licensed because they're licensed for individual use. Registered is if it's a commercial use vehicle, if a uh, watercraft. So think of a ferry, or think of somebody that takes people out for compensation. So they have to register their boat. They have to have a, like, it's a different registration process. Or if the boat is leaving Canadian waters, it also has to be registered. So some people take their boat and they, you know, go through the Great Lakes system and down to Florida and then back up the East Coast. So those have to be registered because they're leaving Canadian waters. But again, Transport Canada, they have a little um, online questionnaire. Do I need to register or license my boat? And then you you click and you answer the questions and you go through what you're doing, size. And then it tells you at the end whether you have to register or license it. Now, okay. if you so only have to scene. license it, you still can register it, but you don't have to. So it's the same. So you register and license in the same kind of uh, department, right? Yes. Yeah. It's all it's all Transport Canada, federal department. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the second question I had about the four wheelers, are they also counted? Like, do you need to register them, too? Because you spoke about uh, boats. And yeah, I think I think four wheelers, you get a green ownership for them. Um, and so you would want to have that endorsed over and, and registered with the MTO office. Now, again, if you weren't taking it off your property, and you weren't plating it, like, you know, getting a license plate for it, then you don't necessarily have to um, go through that process. But I would think from a buyer's perspective, you still want proof of ownership, right? You still want to know that you own that vehicle and that it's free and clear of any liens, that you're not taking it subject to a lien that the that the buyer, the seller never paid off. And so the furniture is different, right? So let's say we have a listing coming next week which he wants to leave all the furniture, like it's not too much, but uh, so it's not like valuable. Right. So it should be okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, um, in some cases where we have acted on very high end um, real estate purchases and, and there's been like a gourmet chef kitchen and there's lots of toys and appliances like stereo system, TV, like high end um, gadgets that are included. Again, we don't typically um, back out a purchase price for that, but we do still do a separate PPSA search to make sure that there aren't any liens registered against those items. What this is so great, Carolyn? PPSA. Sorry, go ahead, Anna. What is PPSA? Uh, Personal for? Property Security Act. Thank you. You're welcome. This was so this good. I feel so like we good. all took a thousand notes and we're going to rewatch this yeah. three more times to see everything times. we miss. So yeah, if you have fun. those links you mentioned that you can send over, Carolyn, that would be great. I'll blast it out to everybody. And 
Thank you so much for your time. You, you oh, blew all of our minds this morning. You're very welcome. Great. Have a great it's day. Amazing. And uh, yeah. we'll see you soon. Thank and uh, you. have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. You as Thank well. You as well. Bye. Bye. Now. Bye.